Hello and good morning, LCI family. Um, and you know, just as I clicked and hit record on my phone here, it seems like all of the lawnmowers in the neighborhood um, just immediately erupted in a united voice. So I do apologize, but hopefully that won't be too much of a distraction as we continue with our devotion this morning. So um, just know that as we continue to shelter in place, we are certainly united in our faith and as a faith community and that we as a staff at LCI, of course, uh, are, are thinking of you all and, and praying for you all. And uh, it's an honor to just be able to share a devotion with you all this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and begin by reading Ephesians 2, 1 through 7. This first time as I read the word, uh, we're just going to let the word sit with us and uh, as we contemplate on its meaning and its purpose. So again, from Ephesians 2, 1 through 7. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. All right, so I'm gonna read that again. This time, let's, let's listen for key words or phrases that really jump out at us. And um, let me read that one more time. Ephesians 2, 1 through 7. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. So before I read this uh, a third time, uh, I just wanted to share with you that uh, for me, when I hear that by grace, uh, and just knowing that that is uh, one of the, the main doctrines of our church and of our faith, um, I, I know that Romans is certainly one of those uh, epistles that really uh, spoke to Martin Luther and, and the justification through faith. But what I love about Ephesians is that it's very short and it's very accessible. And if you do have time, I would encourage you guys to go through, I think it's only six chapters, but just to really uh, spend some time reading that because it is so incredibly beautiful. I love the, the language and it's once again, just very accessible, short and easy to understand. And it's, uh, it, it's almost like condensing all of those gospels into a nutshell. And I love that we have this kind of mini uh, breakthrough in that justification through faith and grace. Uh, by grace you have been saved. And so that really uh, jumps out at me, even though we were dead to our sin. We, we always have God's grace and that uh, Christ's actions on the cross to fall back on. So let me go ahead now and read that one more time. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. So this time, as we, we heard the word, and we're gonna kind of let that now interpret us, and um, how does this passage now uh, resonate with us in our current situation and where we find ourselves and um, I just have to say that uh, again going back to to that passage by grace you have been saved and of course that reminds me of uh, of the beautiful hymn and, and the beautiful song oh how I love Jesus oh how I love Jesus so how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. And that opening verse begins, by grace you have been saved through faith. Um, and it's uh, just one of those things that uh, always puts a smile on my face. And of course, many of you who know me and my background know that I come from a long line of uh, Lutheran musicians and, and organists. 
and uh, it's it's amazing to me that there are still songs that um, I know many of you uh, learned maybe as a kid or as a child that really just stay with you uh, and, and resonate with you and can always put a smile on your face. Uh, I hope that that's you know part of our culture that we never lose for sure. But um, I wanted to share with you just a little bit um, about Ephesians and once again why this is one of my favorite uh, books in the Bible. And for me, Acts is is really about learning about the power. Uh, of the Holy Spirit and um, how that was how the gospel was spread throughout the ancient world but um, in Ephesians like I said this is short accessible um, it's it's an epistle that was written you know by Paul when he was um, in prison and maybe he had help from some of his disciples uh, in writing to the church in Ephesus and just to give a little bit of background in the context uh, on, on Ephesus that this was a very advanced Greek city uh, in Asia Minor or Anatolia and uh, it had a huge uh, temple to the the goddess Artemis or the Roman god Diana the, hunt the huntress and uh, it was one of the seven wonders of the world and so the Greeks uh, prized their patron temple and their goddess and of course Ephesus also uh, because of its location it also had this growing Jewish community and so when Paul was writing to the church in Ephesus this was an established church he had spent many years uh, in, in building up the church there but they were having a hard time in being able to talk to the, the Jews and the Greeks in the city they were very uh, antagonistic uh, towards the, ch the early church and it was I think I have even heard stories that when Paul uh, was spreading the gospel in um, in Ephesus that uh, he disrupted the local economy because you had blacksmiths and uh, metallurgy or jewelers who essentially uh, made idols of the of the god Diana or Artemis uh, and they would make you know jewelry to to offer as gifts and so when the Christian church first started there um, these people were essentially out of work because they were no longer making all of these idols and mass producing all of these um, you know artifacts to to bestow as offering in the temple and um, I think for me uh, the the biggest takeaway in in Ephesians is just knowing that it's it's focusing on how we as a church are one body in Christ and that the the intent of Ephesians is to be able to relate to both Jew and Gentile and I, I one of the famous passages in uh, Ephesians is how Christ himself has broken down that dividing wall of hostility and has united us all and uh, so it's it's being able to to focus on Christ's body um, as which we are uh, as the church uh, in one body and keeping it pure and holy so once again if you guys do have time to to go through and read Ephesians uh, I, I would encourage you to do so uh, God's blessings to you all right now and um, I will look forward to seeing most of you um, this weekend as we all tune in and, uh, and watch service together. So take care and God bless. Thank you.